there's been some sort of horrendous mistake. Um, this isn't the informed drama final what's it thing. Um, this is actually the National Theatre's production of The Body Under the Rug. We are very sorry for any inconvenience caused and we hope you enjoy the show. Thank you very much. You are about to see a play. Now this play is not very good and really should not be in the Interpol drama finals. It is called The Body Under the Rug. The characters in this play are Mrs. Drudge, Inspector Hound, Lady Cynthia Muldoon, Felicity Cunningham, Simon Gascoigne, <laughs> Major Magnus Muldoon. <laughs> However, you are not the only people watching this play. Let me introduce you to two theatre critics, Moon <laughs> and Birdfood. The question still remains, who is the real Inspector Hound? I'm on my own tonight, don't mind if I join you. Oh, hello, Birdboot. Where's Higgs? I'm standing in tonight. Where's Higgs? Every time. What? It's as if we only existed one at a time, combining to achieve continuity. I keep space warm for Higgs. My presence defines his absence. His absence confirms my presence. His presence precludes mine. So where is Higgs? Or perhaps he's dead at last. Or trapped in a lift somewhere. Succumbed to amnesia. Yes, yes, well, I didn't bring Myrtle tonight. Not exactly her cup of tea. Oh, over her head, you mean? Well, no, it's sort of a thriller, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, uh, who killed Vic? That's what I heard. No one will leave the house. Oh, I suppose so. Underneath. Underneath? It's a whodunit, man! Look at it! <laughs> Has it started yet? Uh, yes. Are you sure? It's pause. You can't start with a pause. <laughs> well, in my opinion, there's total panic back there. So where is Higgs tonight, then? It will follow me to the grave and become my epitaph. Here lies Moon, the second string. Where's Higgs? <laughs> I'll uh, give you a tip, then. Watch the girl. Oh, you think she did it? No, no. The girl. Uh, what girl? You won't know her, I'll give you a nudge. Oh, you know her, do you? What's that supposed to mean? I beg your pardon? I'm trying to tip you a wink. She's new from the provinces, going straight to the top. I don't mean to put words into your mouth, but one word from us and we could make her. Oh, I suppose you've made dozens of them like that, I suppose. I'll have you know I'm a family man, devoted to my homely but good-natured wife. And if you're suggesting that a man of my scrupulous integrity... Do not cheat on my wife. No, no. I'm sorry. Is that her? Don't be absurd. Wouldn't we see Ted with the old... Uh, Rudge? Help. Ah. We interrupt our programme for a special police message. The search still goes on for the escaped madman who is on the run in Essex. Essex? <laughs> Country police, led by Inspector Howe, have received a report that the man has been seen in the desolate marshes around Muldoon Manor. The man is wearing a darkish suit with a lightest shirt. He is of medium height and built and youngish. Anyone seeing a man answering to this description and acting suspiciously is advised to phone the nearest police station. That is the end of the police message. So who is that lady I saw you with last night? How dare you! How dare you come here with your slimy insinuations? My wife Myrtle is perfectly aware that a man of my critical standing is obliged occasionally to mingle with the world of the footlights simply by way of keeping au fait with the latest. Uh, can I have chocolate? What? Oh! <laughs> oh yes. Yes, my dear fellow. Yes. Let's have a chocolate. Uh, don't want to, uh, you know. Yes, good show. Good 
show. Um, which one do you fancy? Cherry, strawberry, coffee, cream, Turkish delight? Oh, well, that's what's my man. Right. <laughs> By the way, Burpee, congratulations. What? Your review reproduced entirely in Neon. Oh, that old thing. Oh, you've seen it, of course. Well, I was passing. I mean to take a look when it's all settled down, you know. All I ever got was an unforgettable and a... What was it? Oh, yes, I know. It was like you, I thought it was his. <laughs> Hello, the country residence of Lady Muldoon, one morning in early spring. <laughs> Who? Who do you want to speak to? I'm afraid there is no one of that name here. This is all very mysterious, and I'm sure it's leading up to something. <laughs> I hope nothing is amiss. For we, that is Lady Muldoon and her house guests, are here cut off from the world, including the crippled half-brother of Lord Muldoon, who ten years ago went out for a walk on the cliffs and disappeared. <laughs> and all alone, for they had no children. Derivative, of course, but quite sound. Should a stranger enter our midst, which I very much doubt, I will tell him you called. <laughs> Goodbye. Ah, oh, hello there. I'm Simon Gascoigne. I saw the door was open, so I wandered in. I'm a friend of Lady Muldoon's, the lady of the house, having made her acquaintance. Felicity <laughs> Cunningham, shortly after moving into the neighbourhood. I'm Mrs. Drudge. I don't live in, but I pop in on my bicycle when the weather allows. <laughs> to help in the running of the charming, the somewhat isolated. <laughs> Judging by the time, you did well to get here before high water cuts us off for all practical purposes from the outside world. <coughs> I say it's wonderful how you country people really know weather. Know weather what? <laughs> yes, it does seem to be coming on a bit foggy. Fog is very treacherous around here. Yes, I've heard it said. It was on such a weekend as this. But Lord Albert Muldoon, who had recently brought his beautiful bride back to the home of his ancestors, walked out of his house ten years ago, and his body was never found. Yes, indeed. Poor Cynthia. His name was Albert. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Poor Albert. But tell me, is Lady Muldoon about? I believe she is playing tennis on the lawn with Felicity Cunningham. Felicity Cunningham? Yes, a mutual friend, I believe you said. A happy chance. I will tell them you are here. I really should be off. Please don't disturb them. Oh, they would be disappointed. It is some time since we have had a four for Pontoon Bridge at the manor. There is another guest then? Yes, Major Magnus Muldoon, the crippled half-brother of Lord Albert Muldoon, who turned up out of the blue from Canada just the other day. Completes the house party. I think I must be waiting for Higgs to die. What? Half afraid that I will vanish when he does. Hello. <laughs> I wonder if it's the same for Puckeridge. Who? Third string. You're standing. To whom would you wish to speak? There is no one of that name here. So what's Puckeridge like as a critic then? Ha, <laughs> nobody knows. You must have got the wrong number. There's always been just me and Higgs. Simon Gascoigne is not him at all. What? I said it's not him. <coughs> oh, who is it then? My guess is Magnus. In disguise, you mean? What? You think he is Magnus in disguise? I don't think you're concentrating, then. I thought you said, I keep chatting on about Higgs and Puckeridge. What's the matter with you? Here is another Feliz message. Essex country police are still searching in vain for the madman who is at large in the deadly marshals of the coastal region. Inspector House, who is masterminding the operation, is not available to comment, but it is widely believed that he has a secret plan. Yes! Yes, I should think my name is seldom off Puckeridge's lips. Yes, yes, of course. Higgs never gives me a second thought. Revenge! What? Jealousy. Nonsense, there's nothing personal in it. The paranoid grudge. It is merely not enough to wax another's way, to be left on hand, on call, to step in or not at all, to be the substitute, the near offer. Quite mad, of course. What? 
The answer lies out there in the swamp's moon. Oh. I tell you, the skeleton of the cupboard is coming home to roost. Oh yes. <coughs> Here in the opening stages, we note the, the, the classic input of the catalytic figure that will set up the disruptions, the shock waves, that will strip these crustaceans of their shells and leave them as the trembling raw meat, which at the heart is all of us. But there's more to it I than that. I agree. Keep your eye on Magnus. Out! My saber boot. That's the one. You! Uh, yes. Hello again. What are you doing here? No doubt you're surprised to see me. You must have been desperate to see me. I mean, I'm flattered. <coughs> Couldn't it wait till I got back? There is something you don't know. What is it? <laughs> Look, about those things I said, it may be that I got carried away a little. I mean, we both did. What are you trying to say? I love another. You philandering coward! Let me explain. <laughs> this is only the time and place! <laughs> but I want you to know that my admiration for you is sincere. I don't want you to, mean, to think I didn't mean those things I said. I'll kill you for this, Simon Gascoigne. <laughs> <laughs> I have come to set up the card table, sir. <laughs> I really can't say. Oh, Lady Aunt Maldon will be so disappointed. Does she know I'm here? Yes, sir, I just told her. Felicity. She's the one. Nonsense, red hair. No, no, I mean, she's the one. One who? The lady I saw you with last night. Are you suggesting that a man of my critical standing would trade his pen for a mess of pottage? I find it simply intolerable to be pillified and villaried. No, I never find <laughs> To find myself the object of uninformed malice, the petty slanders of little men. I'm sorry. To suggest that my good opinion in a journal of unimpeachable integrity is at the, uh, the disposal of the first cadet. <laughs> Why, Myrtle and I have been together now for Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Muldoon. No, I mean, who is she? Cynthia, I love you. Don't. I love Albert. He's dead. Do you understand me? <laughs> Albert's dead. No, I'll never give up hope. Let me go. We're not free. I don't care. We were meant for each other. <laughs> and we've been met in time. You're a cad, Simon. You'll use me and cast me aside, as you've cast aside so many others. No, Cynthia. You make me a better person. You're ruthless. <laughs> ha, the son she never had. Now projected in this handsome stranger, transformed into lover, breaking down the barriers to the deepest levels of desire. By Jove, she's fit. Make a fool of yourself. I'll kill anyone who comes between us. <laughs> uh, yes, what is it, Mrs. Judge? Should I close the windows, my lady? Yes, you better. Are the cards ready? Yes, my lady. Um, would you tell Miss Cunning we are waiting? Yes, my lady. And fetch the major down. <coughs> I think I hear him coming downstairs now. Simon! <laughs> <laughs> oh, Simon, say something. I'm most to be sorry. How long have you been a pedestrian? <laughs> Ever since I could walk. Can you walk now? Thank God. Oh, Magnus, this is Simon Gascoigne. What's he doing here? He just turned up. Really? How'd you like it? I could stay forever. <laughs> so, you're still here. Of course he's still here. We're going to play cards. There's no need to introduce you two, is there? No, Simon is an old friend. They're not as old as you, Cynthia <coughs> Yes, I haven't seen Felicity since last night. Indeed. Well, you deal with Felicity. Are you part of Magnus, Felicity? Will Simon and you always be partnered against me, Cynthia? What do you mean, Magnus? You're a damn attractive woman! Please, please, remember, <laughs> Albert. Albert's dead, Cynthia. No, Magnus, this is not to be. It's Simon, Simon Gas Gasboy, isn't it? Gasboy. I'll kill him if he comes in between us. <laughs> right, who starts? I do. No bid. Did I hear you say you saw Felicity last night, Simon? Did I? <coughs> oh, yes. Yes, quite. Your turn, Felicity. I had my time, haven't I, Simon? <laughs> now it seems it's Cynthia's turn. <laughs> That's my trick. Felicity, dear. Now that <laughs> fury like a woman scorned, Simon. Yes, 
I've heard it said. So, I hope you've not been cheating, Simon. No, Felicity, it's just that I will the car. Well done, Simon. <laughs> it's so strange how Simon appeared in the neighbourhood from nowhere. We know so little about him. It doesn't always pay to show your hands. Right, Simon, it's your opening on mine bit. I heard there's a dangerous madman on the loose. Simon. Yes, yes, sorry. I'm Eld. Yes, personally, I think he's been hiding out in the dirt, deserted cottage on the cliffs. Flush! No, Simon, you're not sitting tonight. It's not over yet. We shall see about that sign of gastro. Gas coin. Coin. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're the crippled half brother of the Lord Muldoon who turns up out of the blue from Canada just the other day, are you? I must say it's taken you a long time to get here. Can I have a spin around the road, Barn, Cynthia? No, Magnus, I must talk to Simon. My round, I think. Major? You think so? Yes, Major, I do. Well, <laughs> there's an old Canadian proverb, handed down from the Blaufort Indians, <coughs> that says, He who laughs, laughs, laughs longest. <coughs> yes, I've heard it said. Damn it. Well, I think I'd better go and oil my gun. <laughs> <laughs> I think Magnus suspects something. And Felicity. Simon, was there anything between you and Felicity? No, no, Cynthia. <laughs> it's over between her and me. It was a mere passing, fleeting thing we had. But now that I've found you, if I find you, <laughs> then I'm sure to me, Simon Gascoigne. I will kill you. <laughs> Captain around the old Vic in his opera cloak. Do you believe in love at first sight? It's not that I think I'm a better critic. I feel my whole life changing. I mean, I am. But it's not that. Oh, the world would laugh at me, I know. It's not that they're much in the way of shoes to step into. Call me an infatuated old fool. I mean, they're not. <coughs> Condemn me. He's just standing in my light, that's all. Ah, oh, the sweet madness of love. Of the spasm on the stairs. Myrtle. Farewell. Dreaming of the stairs I'll never reach. For I only live but once. Sometimes I dream I've killed him. What? What? Yes, yes. <laughs> A beautiful performance, I should say so. <laughs> a very promising lady often, a good word. Uh, I know what people will say, there goes bird who buffing up his latest, Ain't but them. the fact is I rise above that. I just believe her performance to be one of the summits in the range of contemporary theatre. The part as written is a mere cipher, but she managed to make Cynthia a real person. <laughs> Cynthia? And should she care to meet me for a drink, just by way of uh, thanking me, as it were? And I'll shave you up quite nicely, wouldn't you say? Oh, yes, yes, and a nice shot of your forces. I agree, it's Magnus and Milo. Oh, what's Magnus and Milo? If we knew that, wouldn't be here, would we, Moon? Let me once say that it has a nice alarm, but at the same time, a morning in the club. Well, it seems open and shut to me, Moon. Does it, I repeat, declare its affiliations? I think one is entitled to ask and hear one is irresistibly reminded of Voltaire's cry, voila. I think one is entitled to ask, where is God? <laughs> God. 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 <laughs> I think it was entitled to ask. No, I'm sorry. There's no one of that name here. Black or white, my lady? White, please. Black or white, please. <laughs> white, please. Black or white, Major? <laughs> white, please. Sugar, my lady. <laughs> Sugar, miss? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Sugar, Major? Yes, please. <laughs> Biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> the second act, whoever fails to fulfill the promise. <laughs> we interrupt our program for a special police message. The search for the dangerous madman who is on the loose in Essex has now narrowed to the immediate vicinity of Muldoon Manor. 
Where's Simon? Who? Simon. Have you seen him? No. Have you, Magnus? No. Oh. There's something foreboding in the air. It's as if one of us. Oh, Felicity, the house is locked up tight. No one can get in, and the police are practically on the doorstep. I don't know. It's, it's just a feeling. It's only the fog. Hound will never get through on a day like this. Hound will never. Um, Inspector Hound. <laughs> the lady will do. Yes. Hi. I came as soon as I could. Where shall I put my coffin and my swamp boots? Mrs. Judge will take them. Be prepared as force as motto has it here, Inspector. <coughs> it takes more than a bit of weather to keep a policeman from his duty. Oh, uh, Inspector Hound, Felicity Cunningham, Major Magnus Muldoon. Good evening. Uh, uh, do go on. Thank you. Well, tell me about it in your own words. Take your time, begin from the beginning, and don't leave anything out. I beg your pardon? I'm Inspector Hound. Yes. Well, what's it all about? I really have no idea. How did it all begin? What? The thing? What thing? The trouble? There hasn't been any trouble. Are you sure? Oh, for goodness sake. Well, oh, this all seems a bit weird, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, do you see your mind is? This puts me in a very difficult I see, I see. I see. <laughs> well, this puts me in a very difficult situation. Well, I'd better be going then. I'm terribly sorry. Oh, that's perfectly all right. Thank you so much for coming. Not at all. You never know. There might have actually been a serious problem. A drink before you go. No, thank you. I do hope you find him. Find him, madam. Out with it. I thought we were looking for the limit. And what do you know about that? It was on the radio. Was it indeed? Well, that's what I'm here about, really. I didn't want to mention it because I didn't know how much he knew. No point in causing unnecessary panic, even with a murderer in our midst. A murderer, you say? <laughs> Who has been murdered, Inspector? <coughs> so was on the radio, then? <coughs> Who has been murdered? Oh, oh my God, you keep getting your lines. Perhaps no one yet. Perhaps no one yet. Let us know we're on time. You believe he is not mixed, Inspector? I do. If, if any of you have recently seen this young gentleman, <laughs> then now is the time to speak. I don't interrupt. Inspector! Very well. No felicity. Please, Lady Muldoon, we are all in this together. I must ensure you to put yourself completely in my hands. Is one of us in danger, Inspector? Do you want me to play this part? <laughs> Didn't it strike you as odd? Did it strike you as odd that on his escape the madman made a beeline for Muldoon Manor? It is my guess that he bears a deep-seated grudge against someone in this very house. Lady Muldoon, where is your husband? My husband? You don't mean. I don't know, is there something you've forgotten to tell me? <laughs> I can't believe it! This case is becoming an utter shambles! But what are we going to do? Are we going to be able to tell him? Inspector! A stranger of just that description has indeed been alarmist. Simon Gascoigne. So where is he now? He, uh, must be around the house. He couldn't get away in conditions like this. I see. Fear not, Lady Muldoon. I shall apprehend the man who killed your husband. My husband? I don't understand. Everything points to Gascoigne. But who's that? Your husband. No, it's not. <coughs> yes, it is. I tell you, it's not. I'm in charge of this, and okay. that's not my husband. Are you sure? For goodness sake. Then who is it? I don't know. <laughs> I'll go the police. But you are the police. <laughs> oh, thank God I'm here then. The lines have been cut. You mean? Yes, we're well, on our own, cut off from the world in grave danger. You mean? Yes, the killer will strike again. You mean? Yes, one of us is the murderer. Search the house. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
time. Kill Higgs. <laughs> but why is he even here? I mean, I'm standing in tonight. Moon. <laughs> so it's me and Puckerich now. Moon! But, uh, I, I didn't. Oh my god, now I see! It all makes sense! Bang! <laughs> what happened with Spectre? So, Simon was the madman. That means one of you killed him. We only have your word for that, Inspector. We only have your word for a lot of things, Inspector. Suppose for a moment that this madman, having killed this unknown stranger for private and inscrutable reasons, was disturbed before he could dispose of the body, and so returned to the scene of the crime, masquerading as police. Inspector Hound. I mean, I didn't. I, I didn't kill him. I'm sure that I... I put it to you. Are you the real Inspector Hound? You know I'm not. The stranger in our midst. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we had a shrewd suspicion that he would turn up here. And he walked straight into the trap. <laughs> what trap? I am not the real man, Miss Muldoon. And I reveal myself as... You mean... Yes, I am the real, sorry, <laughs> Inspector Howard. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.